All right. Greetings, 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 family, friends, and the world. This is me, Kyle, Eric Harris, better known as The Juice, also known as the Alkaline Water Guy. How is everyone doing today? Today, or should I say Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Today is the Sabbath day. Um, this is uh, Assembly of the Righteous, and today is uh, November 23rd, 2024. That's November 23rd, 2024. And uh, this is Assembly of the Righteous. And we're going to start with our theme song with a little something like this. This is our theme song called Fast and Pray. This is what we should be doing every day. Especially in the end days that we are in at this point in time. Song goes like this. <clears throat> Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say if you fast and if you pray, you're here from the Lord the Bible saying. Just be real in your heart. You'll be off to a good start. Just be sure that you're sincere. And the Lord will hear. First repent of all your deeds, good or bad. Take heed, fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. And fast and pray, fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray, fast and pray, fast and pray. This is the reason why I say, why I say, why I say, why, why, why I say. Fast one day, two day, three day, four, sometimes five, maybe more. Some fast water, some fast bread. The best fast bar is dry, you see. You must condition yourself, is true. And this is one way you can do. First day, eat every six hours. Second day, eat every 12. Third day, don't eat at all. Fourth day, try to stall. Fifth day, try to make it through. Sixth day, drink a little juice. Seventh day, and eat a little too. And within the week, You'll get the answer you want to see. It may not come the way you expect, but your answer you will get. And if you fail and couldn't make it in, fast and pray all over again. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say, why I say, why I say, why, why, why I say. This is another way you can do, just as the first is I told you. Pray 6 a.m., 9 and 12, 3 p.m. and 6 oh well. 9 p.m., the prayer takes flight. 12 a.m., lay down all night. 6 a.m., wake up, my friend, and start the process all over again. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say, why I say, why I say, why, why, why I say.
Busy fast and when you pray, think about the creator each day. Talk about your business is true. Keep your mind on the wall. You must do it in order to be released from your sin. Repent and don't do them again. Then something evil comes about. Get more fasting without a doubt. Drink alkaline water of 9.5. Then you hear me. Will rise up. Bad to leave me. Children, your life. Matter of fact, even your wife. Sometimes it's the things we must do to prove. That we're true. The Almighty will see you through. And that's straight from me to you. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Do this we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say, why I say, why I say, why, why, why I say. Right, y'all. This is the assembly of the righteous. Here we speak on thus said Yah, the word of Yah, from the voice of Yah. We come with prophecy, we come with information, and we come with the law. Is what we're about to read after we do the prayer. We're getting ready to do the prayer, and then we're going to do the commandments, which we do every Sabbath day. And then we'll see what the creator brings from this point on. I don't know what I have to speak on at the moment, but I always, I always ask the Father and the Spirit to bring forth what, what he will have us to speak on in this, in this time, in his present time. Bliss be thou, Father of the universe, that bring forth all living creatures forth from the earth. Bliss be thou, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Bless be the Father of Israel. Bless be the Father to our tribe of Israel. Thank you, Father, for all you've done, been doing, and plan to do. We ask you to keep giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, life, health, and strength, food, shelter, and clothing. Let us be happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, and prosperous in all that we do. We ask you to keep leading and guiding us that we can help lead and guide others in your knowledge, your word, your ruach, and your way. We ask you to keep us in every way. Uh, keep your armor protection around us at all times. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, of our, our sins, and the sins of our forefathers and our ancestors for doing the things against the law, against you. We ask you to bring you, us back to your marvelous, marvelous light. And we ask you to lift the spirit of deep sleep from off us as a people so we can see and understand your word, your law, and your way, and your spirit. We ask you to help us in every way, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial, or spiritual. In all these things we pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty. All right. So right now, what we're going to do, feel kind of stuffy a little bit, but just however, you know. This is the Sabbath. Uh, not too long ago, just got up. Uh, from getting some good rest, as we would say. Got some pretty good rest. Uh, last night, my wife got a couple of new pillows. And as soon as I laid my head down, I was out. So, other than that, we getting ready to start with the commandment, which is the law that the uh, Christians say we can't keep and we're not under anymore. I can't understand how can they say we're not under the law when you, I'm, 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 be truthful, we're not under the law, truthfully, we're not, because we keep the law. You're only under something when you're convicted. <laughs> that's true. No, I'm not under the law. That's true. That's, that's very true. No, we're not under the law. Because when the law is a part of you, you're not under the law until you're convicted. If you're convicted, then you're, under the law. That's one those people that's in jail is in jail because they've been convicted according to the law. That's the difference. But a lot of people been brainwashed by the system, which is the satanic system. But other than that, we're going to go into the Ten Commandments. 
which the the uh, the law that the Almighty gave us in Mount Sinai or in the wilderness. And this is we're starting from Exodus chapter twenty, the Ten Commandments. And Yah spake all these words, saying, I am Yah thy father, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Verse 3 and first uh, commandment. Thou shalt have no other deities, which is God's, before me. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything. A lot of people don't understand that, that sentence. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yah thy father, am a jealous father, visiting the iniquity, the sins, of the third of the fathers upon the children, of the parents, I like to say, the parents upon the children unto the third Greek and fourth Roman generation of them that hate me. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. Let me rephrase that. Verse 6. And showing grace, which is mercy, unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of Yah thy father in vain, for Yah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That means if you regard his law. I'm just going to keep it moving from there. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it hallowed, which is holy. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yah thy father. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Verse 11. For in six days, Yah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, Yah thy father blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah thy father giveth thee. 13. Thou shalt not murder, which it says kill. But when you have to kill, you have to kill flesh to eat. But when you murder, you murder, you killing without a cause. Verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. 15, thou shalt not steal. Ninth uh, commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, which is the 16th verse. And the 17th verse is, thou shalt not covet, want, thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not want, which is covet, thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Praise Almighty Yah for the reading of the word. Praise him for everything that he has done, brought us to, and praise him for another beautiful Sabbath day, which we are in at this moment in time. Right now, now we're going to go into whatever the Creator brings for us to. Where's my day, though? Let somebody get the tissue. Let me hit this one more time. That felt like that, that hard paper didn't do too good for me. So, right now, we're here. And be truthful, I don't know what I'm going to speak on just of yet, but the Father will provide. With, with what he wanted us to speak on. It was something I was looking at on the video. There's been so much controversy going on with this election. And then after the winning of, oh, that's much better. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Uh, after the winning of the election, and a lot of people still speaking on it, which is, I don't know why, you know. And mm, you know what? I want to ask a question. My question is this. My question is this. I don't know, and I just it just hit me. Like I said, I don't know what I'm gonna speak on. I don't know where we're going, but I'm gonna ask a question. Why do everybody? Not everybody. Why do? Why do a lot of people hate Trump? 
That's just my question. Why? He's just a man who ran for office and got put in a seat of position. I know what I wanted to do. Man. I know what I wanted to share. Um, just hit me. Uh, why do people hate Trump? Why? I'm just asking why. I mean, he's just a man who ran for a position in a corporate place, in a place of, uh, in a place of, um, how should we say this? In a, uh, in a corporate position. He's just a man who ran in the corporate position. And there's been a lot of things going on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about that they put you as witness or they not witness, but they put you as a, a accomplice to, which is the people, because they've been feeding you what they want to feed you. And the people are what they call the sheep. The people are sheep. Come on now. You give me what I want. The people are sheep. And um, the reason why I say people are sheep is because they follow whatever somebody gives. Whatever somebody feeds you, you follow it. You, you, a lot of people don't do their own research. A lot of people don't study. That's the problem where we at right now. I do not gang gang. Nope. I do yes. not gang bang. Yes. Let me let them pussy out. We'll pull up. Oh, Excuse me, y'all. Look what that is. That just came out of anywhere. Uh, what I wanted to do, let me go to my history real quick. I found uh, it was something me and my wife was looking at a few days ago. And um, they was talking about they was talking about uh, the assassination, right? They was talking about the assassination the assassination of Trump, right? And um, in that information, they was talking about, I don't know if this is what I should be talking about or not, but this is what I wanted to say on that, on that, on that point of view. Hold on. Here you go, right here. Uh, it says, Dan Bongo on Trump's assassination. Let me see. This is this. To is, detect, this to is. counter surveillance. That's what they do. They're the best at what they do. We asked the question during uh, during uh, the conversation we had earlier. How is it that they missed this guy roaming around when the police officers clearly using their good law enforcement instincts said we've got a problem? The answer is because they weren't there. Is that incompetence or is that shutting the door in 97 degrees where you kid they're going, oh, I just didn't know. How did you not have a roof line 130 yards away secured when you're taught day one in Secret Service training that the effective range of a really quality sniper is out to 1,000 yards? How did you not have a drone that... Not only did you not have a drone, again, this is where we get to the shutting the door in 97 degrees and pretending you didn't know. It was offered. They offered you a drone. It's, it's unforgivable. And just think of the rings quickly, and I'll wrap this up. So in the outer ring, you have police officers, you have counter surveillance, and you have a protective intelligence team. Protective intelligence team is trained to go and find threats. They miss them. There's no counter surveillance team. The cops catch it, but because the cons break down, we miss it. In that middle perimeter, you have what they call post standers. Post standers are, they're not DTD agents. They're field office agents. They're not Donald Trump detail agents. Those guys were not even Secret Service. They were HSI, most of them, who were great guys and were fantastic. But that's not what they do. If you grab me as a former Secret Service guy and said, hey, Dan, can you go do a Homeland Security investigation? List? No, that's not what I learned. We are training Secret Service agents to do protection so we don't have to use other entities that don't do protection. In the, so that's the middle perimeter. So that breaks down. The inner perimeter, as you just saw, and I'm glad you played that video, envision that as what we would call the shift, the body guys, right? He's got a shift around them in supervisors. Everyone missed that guy crawling across the roof when he defeated the external, the middle, and the internal perimeter? You shut the door at 97 degrees. I'm sorry. Layered intent, it, it, a, a, a layered uh, incompetence like that is absolutely intent. I've got another question. I'll Intent. Now, quick. Do you have any? All, all, all they were saying right there, and that just came to my mind. So I just said I'd go ahead and play that real quick. But it was intended for them to have him murdered at that at that uh, shooting. I think that was in July. 
But I look at it, the creator had angels around him because I, when I listened, to, I looked at this, really saw it for the first time, because like I said, I don't be all on to, we're not voters, so we're not all into it, but we sit back and we watch. We're watchers. <laughs> you might as well look at it like that. We who are, are indexed, we are watchers. We sit back and we watch because we're not part of the, the uh, we're not part of the, uh, uh, organization. We're not part of the jurisdiction. We're not part of that corporation, which people call a government, but it's actually a corporation. So we're not a part of that corporation, but we're watchers. We sit back and we watch because we are not a part of that fiasco. We're not a part of voting. We're not a part of none of that because we are not citizens. Citizens are ward of the state, so they are a part of that so they can see who their master can be for them, whether people look at it or not. Whatever master they choose, Alex, I don't know if I know Alex. I don't know Alex. Um, if I knew him, I would, I would go ahead and pull him in, but until I start getting to know some of these people, uh, and Alex, if you're on here and you see me, um, I'm sorry, I'm not pulling people in because I have a lot of trolls coming on, so until I get to know you, I'll pull you in on my Zoom. But otherwise, my Zoom is open to friends, family, and those who I know. Uh, I'll pull in on my Zoom and we can have a conversation on this on on tomorrow night. But I don't know you, Alex. I, if I did, I would pull you on. But I don't know you. You haven't been coming on, so hey. So all I'm saying is that on the situation, what happened with Trump at this time? The assess they have been they, they've been trying. They've been trying to. Yeah, I, I see. I'm gonna tell you what I see in my point of view. My point of view of what I'm looking at, what I just shared with you, and this right here is called just in case it's called uh Dan Bong Bongino, Dan Bongino on Trump assassination live, and it says uh get some more here. Warns lawmakers warns. Uh, warns lawmakers Trump News U.S. English News. So just so y'all can see it, I might put it in the description so y'all can see it for yourself. All right. Put that close there so you can see it. Instagram and also Facebook and also um, Zoom. So I might put that in the description. Uh, if I remember to do it, but I might put that in the description. So y'all can check it out for it. It says three hours, but what it does, it goes so long into it, then it skips and turns back. So I seen that when I listened to it for so in, for so long, it it turned back into it turned back to the beginning. So just wanted to share that. But um let me see if I can go back and get just a little bit more information just to share. Magic events, Gray's laws come into effect. Any sufficient advanced incompetence is indistinguishable from malice. The mission of this panel must be to provide a no-holds-barred analysis of all the shortcomings that piled up to enable Butler to occur, an op order for the next administration to correct decades of drift from excellence. I know how difficult high-threat executive protection work is. One must be prepared, coordinated, and lucky every day. The bad guy only has to get it right once. There is no question that a failure of coordination, communications, training, leadership failed America in Butler, Pennsylvania with tragic results. I'm honored and happy to help ensure that will not happen again. I think, and especially as we think the, uh, the anniversary of the debacle that was Afghanistan, the theme of no accountability across all our agencies rings true because no one has been held accountable for anything in Afghanistan or anything since. And I think a, a corollary is if we think back to the, the debacle that was Desert One, uh, the attempted Iranian hostage rescue mission in 1979 ended terribly. Eight Americans dead, international embarrassment, didn't rescue the hostages. Congress took action, changed how the money is spent. Why? Because if you try to do a special operations mission, or if you're trying to do a protective mission while you're doing currency investigations, no, you, you, you can't serve two masters. They created the United States Special Operations Command to find the money and the personnel to focus on getting that mission correct. And if you think about it, the JSOC capability that the United States government has today is elegant, 
and it's effective. And until you change the money issue and until you put people in charge that are serious about this business, we will continue to have the kind of embarrassments both listed by Jason Chaffetz before. And um, uh, we dodged a bullet. Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump dodged a bullet. We cannot afford to have more of these. Good morning. My name is Benjamin. Before he gets started. Now, yeah, he dodged the bullet. I, I will always say, and to me, to me, the father had his angels around him. I mean, you should hear how they when they share this information in this in in this clip, in these clips. God, excuse me, in these clips, that guy was what 140 yards with a sniper. He was a sniper, and he shot pop by my third one because I heard it. I said pew pew, and then Trump did like that, and he he ducked. If he hadn't turned his head, he'd have been gone. But a few people did pass. So the whole thing is that was then they were telling. Cops with um people saying there's someone up on the roof. There's someone on the roof. Oh, okay, that's all right. I mean, this is crazy. So my point and my question is, why do people hate them? It's something that's coming, and it's, what it is is, see, even in the scriptures, or I shall say, in the New Testament, in in um, I always miss out when I try to find this this uh this passage, but I think I know where it's at now. It's in Ephesians when they talk about um, um, evil in high places. Let me see. Um, uh, I think it's right here. The whole That's the whole armor of God. But I was talking about the part when it talks about um, uh, evil in high places. Um, no. I know I'm looking at it, but I don't know exactly where it's at because I haven't been in the New Testament for so long. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And what this is, birth, this is chapter five. It says, and walk in love as the anointing spirit also have loved us. When you say Christ, it means anointing spirit. And have given him, and given uh and give it for us as offering, as sacrifice to, oh, never mind, I'm going to, but fornication and all uncleanness and co uh, covetousness, let it not be once among you as become the same, neither filthiness or foolish talking, nor jesting, which are the not convenient, but rather giving of things. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, oh, that's part of the commandments right there, isn't it? Has an inheritance in the kingdom of Yah, which is kingdom of Christ, which is kingdom of Yah, and of God, kingdom of the anointed spirit and of Yah. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Yah upon the children of disobedience. This is verse, this is chapter five, verse seven. Be ye not therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness. We was sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the in Yah. I'm just gonna read it from where I see it. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto Yah, and having no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness but rather reprove them as what we should do. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. 13, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, which is the spirit. For whosoever doeth make manifest is light, which is the spirit, which is us, because the spirit is within us. I'm seeing it for where I, the way I'm interpreting it, I'm seeing it for the truth that it is. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and arise from the dead, and the anointed spirit shall give thee light, which is true. Christ, and a lot of people, when you say Christ, a lot of people think of a man instead of looking at what it really means. Verse 15, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil, which they are. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of Yah is. 
and be ye and be not drunken at, with wine wherein is excess but to fill but be filled with the spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms that's true and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the to yah giving thanks always for all things unto yah and the father in in the anointed spirit from the anointed spirit, actually, because they still trying to promote that deity. Submitting yourself one to another in, to, uh, in the fear of Yah. Then it goes into talking about wives submitting yourselves unto your husband. No, I ain't. When, uh, all right, let me go into that point. <clears throat> so I guess this might be in. Verse 6. We'll go into chapter 6. I ain't been over here so long. This time about the whole armor of God there in uh, verse 10. But I'm trying to get to the point when it talks about, finally, my brother, be strong in Yah. I'm just going to start at 10. 6 and 10. Put on the whole armor of Yah that ye may be that you be, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, which is the system. For we wrestle not again. Here we go. Here we go. Verse, starting at verse uh, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and uh, against principality, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, okay, good. I finally found it with the armor of God. That's where it is. So this is what's going on. And people don't realize that they are part of the situation. Let me read it. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness. Just like what you, this media feeds you. Do you know... A lot of people I ask say, who you vote for? Just asking. And some say, most of them say uh, Trump. And then uh, the ones that that that's for Kamala, they get angry. You know, I mean, you can just have a decent conversation. But I like to start off. I don't I don't have a. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a voter. I'm, I'm sovereign. So I sit back and I wonder not I wonder. I, I sit back and see who is the best candidate to do what they're supposed to do for this corporation, which people call a government or a, uh, or a country. But it's a corporation who's leading the people that the people don't know. So I sit back and I just say, well, who's, who would have been the best candidate to run uh, this corporation that people call a government? And to me, from what I've seen on both parties, Everybody, the, the, the right man won. The right person won, shall I say. Still a person. <laughs> Still a person. But it says again, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And if y'all really knew this is true. This is a true statement. And the things that has been going on for the last 10 to 20 years, y'all wouldn't believe if y'all eyes was actually open for those who don't know. See, what gets me is these people say, well, I'm a Democrat. I'm a this and that. That's your God. I'm a Republican. I'm a That's your God. That's your G-O-D. Look how people are going against... He's just a man sitting in the seat for four years to do a work. That's all he is. But people hate this man for I don't know whatever reason. But people don't do research. This is what I understand when it says in Malachi, the, the father will change the, the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the father. Majority of the people have childlike minds. I'm just being open today, I guess. I don't know where I'm going. 
I'm just speaking. Majority of the people have childlike mind. They're children. They don't go do no research. They go by what they hear and what they've been fed by through the media. The media is feeding them what they listen to. Oh, okay, this must be true. Go research. Go and find out how the economy was when Barack got in, got in power, who put things unnatural in, in, uh, uh, in order or, or, or quote, supposedly gave it a law, things that's unnatural, and y'all know what I'm talking about. He signed into law some things that's unnatural. People was getting, our people was getting killed in the streets when he was in power. When I say kill, I mean the so-called laws, the law officers, the policy officers was murdering our people in the streets at that time. All you got to do is go back and research. Look what was going on in that time. Then when, when uh, the next man got in the office, which is Trump, the, cat, the gas prices was coming down. The economy was better. No matter how much the media was feeding the people that he was racist. The, see, this is what I mean. Sheep, sheeple. The media was feeding the people that he was racist. The media was feeding people that he was doing this, he was doing that. See, as long as the media is controlled, it's going to feed you which, what it wants you to know. Just like all the TV shows. Just like the television shows. They feed you what, what the media wants you to know, and you take it in your mind. You be like, okay, this must be true. Okay, this is okay. And then you just think it's, but then you don't go and do no fact, no, no fact check. You don't go do no research. You don't go find out for yourself. And this is the reason why, if you look at some people in school, the ones that study came out with knowledge and information because they studied, they got, they got good on their test because they studied. That's what researching is. It ain't nothing but doing a study. You're studying, researching, finding out facts and truth about what it is you're looking for. A lot of people are just go by hearsay and what they believe. I like to say belied, but believe. They go by what they believe. They ain't going by facts. They go by what they were told. Then when you go and look at man, oh, I didn't know this. They, I, I, I ain't going to get on. They, that's so silly. They still, and these people that still can accept whoever won, because you know something? I'm going to tell you the truth from my point of view, and I don't vote. When Biden won, I knew it was, I knew it was rigged. All the stuff he was saying and he was doing, I knew it was rigged. But people want to believe what they want to believe. But you know what happened? People let it go, and they still was on Trump all four years. Trump this, this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that, this, Trump, Trump. Every time I, heard, almost every time I turned and I heard D.L. Hughley, which I liked at one time, I liked him at one time. Every time I turned, every time, Trump this, Trump, 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 Trump. I had liked him back in the day. I kind of liked him. I like, I like, like this, you know, performance and stuff like that. But to me, when you just hate for somebody for no, I bet he don't even know Trump. I bet he never sat down. Hey, Mr. Trump, how you doing? You just, he don't even know him. But every time you open, every time you turn back, he was always talking about him like he know him, like he did something to him personally. And this is what I'm saying with majority of people across the country. A lot of y'all don't know Kamala personally. A lot of y'all don't know Trump personally. But y'all see the things that he has done and things he has played, the things he has laid out and his um and his uh what would you call um a uh uh oh man his uh his, his resume I put it like that you see his resume and if you ain't seen it go back and check it out research it and don't look for just the bad because that's what all y'all gonna do look for the good. And then go back and look for the same thing for Kamala. Look for the good and the bad in her. Then you start finding out facts and truth. Then you'll be true to yourself. See, once you're true to yourself, then you, hey, okay, I can see things now. I see clear. But as long as you hear from other people, listening to other people, listening to what the media is telling you, because when Trump came out, the first thing he was telling you, fake news, fake media, the media's controlled, and y'all still can't see. 
And this is what trips me out. So this goes to show, I understand the revelations. Well, I gave you what I wanted to know. I'm going to go ahead and read this one more time. I'm going to start back at... Um, <clears throat> Read this down again. I, I have to. I do this. I get in. I stop, and I have to go back because I like to reiterate what I'm sharing. Verse twelve. Uh, the whole armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of the darkness of this world. Be in the world, but not of the world of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. And there's a lot of things. All I got to say is if you don't know about Pizza Gate, go check it out. If you don't know about adrenochrome, go check it out. If you don't know about the organ harvesting, go check it out. If you don't know about the, the child abductions and the, uh, the women trafficking and trafficking all together, go research and check it out. Find out information about those things. Find out who was behind those things. Find out why all our people that was coming up missing for the last 10 to 20 years in this country. Go research and find that out. Go find out reason why these things are happening. Go find out who's behind it. Matter of fact, it's a documentary called Just the Tip 1, 2, and 3. Go check those out. Just the Tip. It's a documentary called Just the Tip 1, 2, and 3. Also, it's another documentary called Died Suddenly. Died Suddenly. All right? Y'all go check the... See, I'll give you information for stuff that you need to go see for yourself. Some people tell you stuff you still ain't gonna believe. Go look it up for yourself. Once you start researching information, you start seeing the real truth because a lot of y'all are blind. Y'all blind the truth. You're blind the facts. And you're buying to what it is that people bring to you outside of what the media give to you. I went to the, uh, one of the barbershops earlier this week. They looked up. The whole, and usually I go in, they playing music stuff, but the whole continents of the barbershop was down. People weren't saying too much. They was in there, hey, I came, hey, how you doing, bro? You know, one brother he always gets to use, he gets six gallons from me all the time, right? So I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling the energy in the room. So I said, so I go, I, I get the brother his six gallons of, of water. Then I said, I said um, who did y'all vote for? And they said, uh, well, you know, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. I said, well, I just want y'all to know that I'm sovereign. So y'all know I'm sovereign because I, where I go, I let people know what, who I am, what I am, and I share information. So they already know where I stand. But I, so, so I don't vote, I can't vote, but I lose my sovereign status. So I'm just letting y'all know that I didn't vote but I like to know who is the best candidate for the position. I'm not Democrat, nor am I Republican. I want to know who's the best candidate by listening and understanding what the best or uh, uh, what it is that they may have. So a lot of them, some of them, they never said they didn't uh, 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 who they vote for um, because the way the energy was, I could about, I could about guess. So I'm just letting them know not being biased, I'm just saying, well, if y'all listen to what was going on and ultimately the conversation ended, you know, they were sharing information on certain points of views. So I said, if y'all did, if y'all had a chance to listen instead of going by what y'all have been fixed, I said, uh, where did you hear y'all information from? Was it uh, uh, CSNBC or, or, or CNN or Fox News? I said, oh, well, that's your problem right there. I said, that's your problem. Y'all listen to people, y'all y'all listening to the news that's been feeding you what they want to feed you. I said, if y'all was do, if y'all was just going in and y'all did, you said, oh, we look at some stuff on YouTube and this and that. I said, okay. But I said, if y'all was doing this and doing this, listening what was being said, I mean, close your eyes to what you were seeing and listen to what's being said. You'd have seen a big difference. You'd have heard a big difference. But the problem is people are going by what they're being fed by the media. And the media is controlled, so they're going to give you what they want you to know. Then I said, why is Kamala 20 million in debt? And she had almost a billion dollars. 
Do y'all want somebody to be in debt? You have, I, you know some. I've never heard anybody that was running for that office to be in debt like that. How can you be in debt and people are donating money to you? How can you be in debt? And I said, you know what? I said, this is allegedly, this is my point of view. I'm going to tell you what was going to happen. This is me talking. This is Mikael talking. This is my point of view. Now, th this is my choice. Now, I'm going to tell you what my point of view is. I said, what she was going to do is, once she would have got in office, she'd have paid all those people that 20 million because she thought she was going to win. She'd have paid them people that 20 million. And then what? What? She'd have paid them that 20 million out of the taxpayer's money. She took the taxpayer's money, paid all those stars off, and the people would have never knew. That's why she's 20 million in debt. That's why it came out. She's 20 million in debt. Because if she'd have won, you'd have never knew. And this is why the country is the way it is now. Because whoever been in, in, in charge, they've been, that's the reason why the deficit is so much in debt right now. Well, you remember the last four years? Trump was cutting down the wars when he was in point. But when the last four years, when, when, when Biden was in, was in office, now they, 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 Ukraine and the wars and all this stuff is picked up. People don't look at this stuff. I don't know why I'm talking on this today, but it's coming the way it's coming. I didn't have nothing to talk about. As his father always brings information out, I bring it the way it comes. And all I'm saying is, why do so many people hate Trump? That's just my question. Why do so many people, even though he won fair and squarely, why do these, Dem I don't even want to say Democrat, I'm just going to say people. Because I'm not calling people a Democrat because I don't associate people like that. That's just a, a term for an office that's going to be held for four years until somebody else come and take in place of the office, whether either one of the two horns, let me get that to you real quick, since I didn't go ahead and give you the uh, information on, wherefore take ye unto you the whole armor of God that ye, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now, that there's what I was looking for. Now I make sure I mark it. But I've been looking for this a few times. See, I haven't been in the new in a long time. So it's a lot of, I've forgotten in the new, but I used to know this more from Genesis to Revelation until more truth came. And I started learning more information. And then I went into the law to start seeing what the law said compared to the new. Then I said, okay, I'm, now I'm seeing a lot of flaws. And I don't want to go into that. Cause, well, I could go into that because that's where we at today. But I'm going to go into where I'm going to give you these two horns. In Revelations 13. See, a lot of people don't know what these two horns is in Revelation 13. Thank you, Father. I'm right here. Go right up on it. Right here. Um... Right here at the beginning of verse 11. Right here. Revelation 13 and 11. And a lot of people don't even know. This is the second beast, which is the second system of the Roman Empire. The second system of the Roman Empire. Right here, starting at verse 11. See, Revelation 13, the first beast, which got its power from the dragon. The dragon was the, the Greek. See, the, the third and fourth generation. The third and fourth generation of them that hate me was is the Greek, which said, which is has taken the whole earth, has, has let me say this real quick. Let me give you the facts. Because I know I've shared it several times before, but some of y'all probably haven't looked in the information where I've shared. So I'm gonna give you the information. Let me give you the facts. Uh Daniel 2. Daniel 2, we just started at 39. Daniel 2 and 39, this is where I'm at anyway. 39 and 40, shall I say. And after thee, this is after the head of gold, which is Nebuchadnezzar. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, which is the Medes and the Persians. Then it says, and another third kingdom of brass, 
This is Daniel chapter 2, talking about the breakdown of the statue that of the dream he had. He said, uh, uh, inferior to thee and another kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Another third kingdom, again, in, in 39, Daniel 2 and 39, which shall bear rule over all the earth. That's when Greek came into power and Alexander the Greek, they say great, but Alexander the Greek, it went around and he took bare rule over the whole earth. This is where Greek, 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 Greek took over the whole earth. And then in verse 40, it says, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. This is the Roman government, the Roman uh, 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 generation of the fourth generation, which is the Roman Empire that took over after Greek, which got its power from the dragon. The dragon, both of them is Esau now, just to let you know. Esau, which was given the prophecy by Isaac in Genesis, write it down, Genesis 27, verse 39, like you're reading right here, 39 and 40. 39 and 40 in Genesis of chapter 27 and 39 and 40 in Daniel chapter 2. Connections. 40 again. And the fourth kingdom, which is uh, Rome, shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. I'm just going to leave it right there. Now, let me share with you over here as I was going to in chapter 13. But before I do that, let me go ahead and give you the dragon so you know where he got his power from before I read it. Revelation 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great Red dragon. Red is the key, the key, the key point. Because when you go to um, Genesis 27, verse 39 and 40, it talks about him having the dominion, and it says, by thy sword shall thou live. But in verse 20, in chapter 25, it talks about Esau came out red and hairy, red, came out red and hairy. He came out being the first, but he was red and he was red and hairy. So we know that this is pertaining to Esau according to the blessing in 27, 35, 39, and 40. So, and there appeared another one in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, which is seven continents, and ten horns, which is power, and seven crowns upon his head. That means that there was a king over each continent at that time they put someone got in, someone got it was put in charge over each continent at that time but what happened over here now let's go over here to revelations chapter 13 now the first b i'll just read verse one before i go into 11 the first b said the first b chapter 13 and one the first beast and i stood upon the stand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and seven and ten horns. See, now this is the Greek, I mean, the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. And having ten horns and up, which is power, uh, uh, power, and upon his horns, ten crowns. See, the crowns represent kingdoms. The horns represent power. And upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. And this is where the whole world has blasphemed of the Father through the Roman Empire. And to break all that down, when you get church and state. So now I'm going to go into the, uh, the second beast. That's the first beast. Matter of fact, I have to read verse 2 over here so you can understand. And the beast which I saw, I forgot, I got to give you number 2 to give you understanding. The reason why I'm telling you about the red dragon. Verse two, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet was as the feet of a bear 
And to me, and let y'all give me something better to understand, to me, this is uh, England. I'm saying it's England. And the feet of the bear is Russia. And that's me saying that. Till you can show me better, that's what my thoughts are, you know. But, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And that means that the Roman Empire over each kingdom, the power was the ones who were speaking and who was in charge, which is Esau in general. And, he, and the dragon, see, here you go. And the dragon gave him his power. See, the dragon was Greek. This is where Rome has come into power, the first system of Rome. This is when Caesar came into power. Caesar. And I'm saying England, but it could be Rome itself. But the point is that Caesar, uh, the dragon gave him his power, meaning Greek gave Ro the Roman Empire his power and his seat and great authority. This is how Rome got the power from Greece or Greek, right? Now we go over here to uh, the second beast. This is the second system. And as the second system comes in, let's look at verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, which is still the Roman Empire, but this is the second uh, system of the same beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. The two horns, Democrat and Republican. Democrat and Republican. And what? And he spake as a dragon, meaning that whoever won, they spoke, like right now. The whole world is looking at Trump. The last four years, the whole world is looking at Biden. When Obama came into problem, into power, the whole world was looking at Obama. Spake as a dragon. And that's the point. So when you understand the scriptures and the way the Father has given you, well, given me the spirit to see, and that's where I'm seeing it. And if someone come with something better, I say, okay, well, what it might be, or could be, or is. But until, until someone prove anything otherwise to me, to me, I'm showing you what the spirit has given me to see. When I say the spirit, I'm going by spirit according to the scriptures of what I'm reading. The spirit is in the scriptures. Revelation means to reveal. Reveal the prophecy that was given from the scriptures and from the Torah and Tanakh. And that's what I'm sharing. So your two horns is Democrat and Republican. And no matter who comes into place to sit in that seat in that time, they would be the mouth of uh and that speak as the dragon with great authority in this time. But right now, why y'all hating the person, the individual? So I just wonder why do people hate Trump? Why? Why is because the media feeds you? The media gives you what they want you to know. So by that, hey, you can be led. Like they say, you can be led, uh, led to uh, uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But the sheep can be led to slaughter, and y'all don't know. It's a lot of things in prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled yet. We don't know what's going to happen next. We don't know what's coming. All I can one thing I can say though is this. One thing I can say is this. If any of y'all remember me, if a lot of y'all, when I was in Atlanta, around the time of 2011, 2012, a lot of people was going, yes, 2011, 2012, a lot of people was going through a lot of situations. They was having spiritual uh, um, dreams, I put it like that. They was having dreams of things that's happening that the system was planning on doing, but to me, the father has disrupted a lot of things because they was planning one thing. Remember, if y'all remember around that time, they had FEMA coffins, a whole lot of coffins in Georgia and around the country. FEMA coffins, uh, where else they had set up? FEMA coffins was one. It was a lot in my mind a few seconds ago. FEMA coffins was one around that time. 
Oh yeah, they had those uh those guy stones. Remember those guy stones they had set up? Uh, they was planning on reducing the population of the world down to so many. Do y'all remember that? See, people don't remember stuff. Do y'all remember that? See, it's a lot of things they the, the satanic system had planned. The satanic, a lot of people, they write that. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I, see, people forget. They forget. They don't think about the stuff that this system in high places, wickedness in high places had set up for the people, for the masses. And the masses don't even realize they begging for the devil. They, they, they love them and they're groveling that for the devil. And I'm saying devil, I mean the evil ones. It's a lot of stuff that's been going behind the scenes that the father has, to me, now and this is me, you can agree with me or you don't have to. The father put Trump in the place to clean up. And like I said, I told a couple people this yesterday and I've been saying it. It's time for cleansing. It's time for the earth to be cleansed. The Father's Spirit is here, and we're in the day now. We're between the judgment from 2020 and the um, great substance. We're in between that. Time for cleansing. It's time to clean up. A lot of the people, they, they, hey, baby, the water boiling. You're welcome. Um. It's cleanup time. A lot of people don't even understand it. A lot of people don't even understand it. Don't even know. And they can't even see. Because they've been led down the dark path. And when you've gone for somewhere for so long, you went in for so long, you think it's right. And a lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. So some, so many people have been led down the wrong path. They can't even see the, the, lit, the lit path. They can't even see the truth. Because they've been laid down one way for so long. But the Father has given you the information in the scriptures, in the Torah and Tanakh, to let you know and understand what's coming. But the scriptures have been manipulated in the New Testament in many different ways. So a lot of people look at stuff in the New Testament and they think it's something other than what it really is. But when the Spirit comes upon the individual that the Father placed the Spirit upon to see the information, People are stuck in their way. Many are stuck in their way. Some that is that sighing and crying for the creator, those are the ones who are going to see. But people whose mental is stuck, number one, is because of the way they think in their heart in the first place. The ones who is true, they're going to see the real truth. And as they see the real truth, they're going to accept the real truth. So, we ain't gonna be too long on this one today. Damn, I'm already an hour in. Um, right now we're gonna pause this. We're gonna go to part two, and I don't even like I said. I don't know why I came the way I came, and I think we'll call this. Why do people hate Trump? That's just a question. Why do people hate Trump? That's just a question. Other than that, we're gonna pause you real quick over here on uh, Zoom, and don't forget we're here every Sabbath at twelve. PM noon Eastern time. And um if you'd like to connect with me, uh my direct number is 770-572-5315. Um let me pause you first so I can get ready to pull the other two other uh, three out, which is Facebook, YouTube Live, and Instagram. So we uh the full version is on YouTube, which you can go to uh Juice Pro 2012. That's J U I C E P R O 2012 on YouTube, or just put in your search engine, Michael the Juice Harris. All right. Or you can go to Facebook on uh, Mikael Harris, that's M I apostrophe C H A E L space H A R R I S space H A. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I go. And also on my uh, Instagram, which is Lakaim underscore the Jew. That's L-K-H-Y-Y-M underscore T-H-E-J-U-I-C-E. -E. We're going to pause you real quick, Zoom, and we'll be right back with you. 
Greetings, 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 family, friends, and the world. This is Mikael Eric Harris, better known as the Juice, also known as the Alkaline Water Guy. This is part two of Assembly of the Righteous. We're here every Sabbath at 12 p.m., which is 12 noon Eastern time, every Sabbath. And um, this is part two. And um, um, today the, the topic is, why do everybody hate Trump? Why do people hate Trump? I said Trump. <laughs> Why do people hate Trump? And then I'm glad, as, uh, uh, and while I was preparing part two, uh, I found out who Alex was. So Alex is um, one of the brothers who had I, I shared with you, I believe that was last week. Uh, the brother shared with me uh, um uh, about a brother that he helped get indexed. He helped the brother get. He helped the brother get indexed, and uh, he did. A, um, he sent me a some information, and I actually read it. And I appreciate you, Alex, for doing that for uh, helping the brother get indexed and for knowing about it yourself and getting indexed yourself. Other than that, um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. This is uh, Assembly of the Righteous. And here we talk about the word of Yah, the word of the creator. And like I said, I always ask the spirit to allow a uh, uh, lead and guide me on information on what to speak on. And since um, we started off with this, this is, this is a video that I plan on putting into the uh, information. Come on now. Hold on real quick. Let me get so I can get this back up. There we go. Right here. Now, this is called Dan uh, bon, Bongino, I believe it is. Dan Bongino in the Trump assassination. So I started off with this on part one. And this is another part. As you can see, just so y'all can see. So you can see this is the name of the video. I plan to put it in the post. I plan to put the video in the post so y'all can check it out. It says it's three hours long, but what it does, I see it loops. Once it goes so far into it, it loops. And that's the reason why I believe it's three hours long. Just like one of my, uh, some information I've shared. And uh, I think that by doing that, it's because it was cut. But other than that, uh, I'm going to play a certain, I'm going to play this part um, with one of these three guys. I think they're professionals. That they had to speak, but I'm gonna share another part real quick. Schaefer, I'm a SWAT operator with Washington Regional SWAT Team. Oh, we, we cannot afford to have more. Okay. Business. Now, there's another person coming up to speak. Good morning. My name is Ben Schaefer. I'm a SWAT operator with Washington Regional SWAT Team. It was tasked for uh, presidential support on that day. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone. Uh, for the opportunity to be here today um, as you examine uh, the assassination attempt on former President Donald J. Trump in Butler, PA. Uh, before I begin, I feel compelled to also echo those condolences uh, for all the victims that, that suffered that day um, and, and continue to suffer because of those tragedies. Um, since joining the Marine Corps in 2004, I have deployed, fought, and been recognized for exemplary service and performance in both Iraq and Afghanistan. I've provided security services to the President of the United States and other high-ranking members in the United States government. I've protected diplomatic persons, high net worth corporate clients, media personalities, investigative journalists, and the general public. I continue that work today as a SWAT team leader and executive protection specialist. I've been recognized on numerous occasions for my high level professionalism, proficiency, and knowledge of all security measures while working in those fields. As I analyze what happened in hindsight and real time on July 13th, there's a few points that I'd like to talk or mention um, that haven't set well with me or I haven't been able to reason. Um, part of that is in the communication conversation of what happened that day and the abilities or lack thereof. Um, the ability to commute, communicate quicker between agencies 
is, is definitely a shortfall. Uh, that, that was not optimized and, and what we normally see in the presidential support mission. This all led to an obvious delay in communication uh, when we were beginning to target and respond to the threat uh, that was Mr. Crooks that day. The lack of coordination between tactical element leaders and the Secret Service left ground elements in the dark and prevented, ne ne prevented necessary time to prepare for specific venue considerations and needs prior to that event. All Overwatch, sniper, counter sniper positions should have had direct communication with each other that day at that entire rally. Some of the technical difficulties that have already been mentioned that I'd like to echo is the lack of drone coverage or drone overwatch that day, which left many danger areas exposed and severely, and I say that again, severely impacted the ability to secure the venue and the event itself. Other points of failure, other danger areas that have been noted, um, and I feel the need again to echo those, um, is the water tower that was located uh, in the northeast section of the event. Uh, those, that's a major, uh, if not catastrophic failure, to not identify that that is a elevated, optimal, and opportunistic place for anyone with any kind of knowledge to wreak havoc on that event. The task that day broken down included local law enforcement's responsibilities um, that include traffic, parking, and access were their primary roles. State law enforcement handled crowd control, medical support to those in need due to the temperature that day, there were a lot of, of, of heat casualties a lot of heat strokes, a lot of heat stress induced uh, issues. Uh, the local counter assault teams were to neutralize and mitigate any threat to the former president. Local SWAT counter sniper teams were to scan and hunt for anyone deemed a deadly threat to any member of the crowd or the former president. I'm going a little further. So Y'all can listen to this. I'm using that video as Here part of the investigation. And walk us through what, what you were seeing in the, the minutes before the actual shooting happened. Uh, there's a lot of people around the building that were complaining about some guy crawling up the building and then crawling up the, uh, the roof. According to a former agent, Secret Service counter sniper teams should have scoped out and advanced on those areas where there were potential threats beforehand and known what the line of sight to Trump could be. The fact that somebody was able to get within 200 yards with a rifle and be on an exposed rooftop, be seen by other people there, be seen by what should have been cameras and drones and many other things in place. To, to watch for that, something broke down. That shooter with that rifle should have never been that close to the former president of the United States at a venue like this. Thank you for, thank you for showing that video, appreciate that. Um, and so we've seen aspects of those videos uh, because they're, those are public domain videos. Um, what, one spectator was killed and we express condolences to him, his family, Corey Comprador. Okay. I don't want too much of that again. Y'all can see it for yourself. I'm planning on putting this inside the links so y'all can check it out for yourself. But the whole point is that why was that? Why was he so wide open? 
Why was it so vulnerable? Why was it when people was telling them that they saw people, they were, don't say nothing. It was all intentional. See, the people don't know this government. As I just read to you, I must hit it one more time since we're over here in part two. And I'm glad I found it this time. I've been looking for this and that goes to show I, I'm not into the, the, uh, the New Testament as I used to be when I was growing into the word. But now that I come to know the word, which is the law, I come to understand where the satanic forces lies and the lies in the New Testament with manipulation by precepts of men who actually wrote and put together the New Testament. I've shared a lot of it. If y'all get time, go check out. I did a few of them. One of them is, um, uh, did Luke walk with the one called Christ? I did a video on that. I did a lot of videos and just sharing the information, showing the facts between the law, the law and prophets, the New Testaments and Revelation, which is the revealing of the information. So right now we are here at Ephesians 6. Now I can go ahead and read it the last time I was looking for it in part one, but I'm here now. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in, in Yah and in the power of his might. Verse 11. Put not, put on the whole armor of Yah, that ye may that ye may be able to to stand against the wiles of the devil, which is of the system. This is actually the system. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against regular flesh and blood, but against principality. This is true, which is the system. Principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. And the people don't realize, excuse me, y'all, let me got to drink some mucus tea. People don't realize the darkness of this world is the so-called corporation. I, wouldn't, I will say government, but I'm just going to say the corporation because it's, it's actually a corporation, a corporation. And I did a post on Facebook. Uh, I did, uh, what did I call it? You are a you are an employee of a corporation called the USA, and I kind of broke it down. If y'all got time, I, I put that in a Facebook page, uh, and I broke it down. Let people, and I broke it down how it's a corporation because the corporation has the president. It has uh, some have vice presidents, vice president, vice president. It has a treasury, it has a secretary, and it has a board. That what a corporation and a company is and is ran by. And I also shared on, in that same information that by it has a, 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 these things as the head, the people that has a social security number and birth certificate are employees. They're employees of the corporation. And I shared some more information of it into that showing how this, this and that was and is. And how it breaks down to they have a company over them, over that company, which is called the Vatican, which is over the church and state. So I kind of broke all that down where people can see. But you know what? I only had two people to actually give me props on that. That said they see and understand and gave me props. Everybody else. And it was the way I broke it down. It wasn't just, you know, like the average person's way he said it. it was the way I broke it down. But. You got haters out there, even though if they see the truth in their face, they don't want to give you props. No different than Candace Owens standing up for Trump after listening, after doing this and listening what's being said. See, the whole thing is believe, what did it say? Believe uh, half of what you see and none of what you hear. But you see and hear what's been going on, what they're talking about. And if you believe none of what you hear, all I can say is Kamala gave you nothing about what she planned to do. And then she would tell you, well, just go and go and look at my website. They got the the, the everything they plan on doing. She don't even know her own policy, what she planned on doing. And these people hate Trump because he's telling you what he planned to do, what's his policies. And like I say, I'm just to let y'all know, I'm I'm a watcher. I'm a watchman. Dang. Thank you, Father. That made me realize what watchers are supposed to do. Watchmen is supposed to go out and share the information with the people. Watchmen, I am, ooh, 
dang, dang, that hit me like, woo. And the reason I'm saying that because <laughs> in Ezekiel chapter 33 and Ezekiel chapter 3, he said he set us as watchmen. Reason why? Because we're not a part of the system. We're not a part of this jurisdiction, this system that the public is public, which are citizens. I'm not a citizen. I'm a sovereign principle. See what I'm saying? I'm not a citizen. A citizen is a ward of a state. And if you don't know what the ward of the state is, let me break it down for you. Since I'm right here at the end of this point right here, the ward of a state, what do we call a, uh, a, a warden over a prison, right? A warden over a prison is the HNIC over everybody, whether the prisoners or the, uh, and not or, prisoners and the guards. The warden is over the prisoners and the guards. So what is it called if you are a, a ward of the state? The state is the warden over its citizens. And who they have over the prisoners or the slaves, which is citizens, they have, or, or shall I say, uh, policy officers. The policy officers are the quote-unquote cops. They're the trust they trustees, baby? Trustees, there you go. These are the ones who call, when they decide to, to, to give you a citation, that's actually a... Uh, uh, that's actually a um. Come on, Mike. That's actually a uh, 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 um, uh, uh, not a lawsuit, but uh, a uh, what word am I looking for? It's it's the beginning. Yes, maybe you're right. It's the beginning of a lawsuit. They're suing you for whatever they're giving you a citation for. I always say, remember the word corpus delecti. Corpus delecti, if you understand what corpus delecti, that means that if you have actually caused a real crime, a crime is you hurt someone, harm someone, or damage someone's property. If you have not done either one of those, you have not caused a crime. You have not committed a crime. A crime is if you hurt someone, harm someone, or damage someone's property. If you have not done that, you have not committed a crime, you have not caused a corpus delecti. But yet still, these policy officers, which they call police, are giving you citations, which is the beginning of a lawsuit, and suing you for a cracked windshield, a uh, 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 a tail light being out, a headlight being out. Not their ID. Say that again. Not identifying. Yourself. Not identifying yourself, which is actually what they call an ident uh, ID card. What they call an uh, ID card. I call a photographic representation of the beneficiary of the trust. That's what I call it. It's a photographic representation of the beneficiary of this trust. So this is what a citizen is. A sovereign is free. He's a free being under the creator's system, under the creator's laws. That's what being sovereign is. So but to finish that up, over here in uh, Ephesians, it says, um, "For the we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. This is the satanic system y'all been living the whole time. Y'all didn't even know it. This word, this system is the satanic system. Since Greek and Rome came into power, it's been satanic. The people been living in it so long, like I always say, if you're living in a toilet, it's like you're in the toilet with mess and everything all around. <laughs> Almost went graphic. With stuff all around you. And until you come out of the toilet, wash yourself off, you can look back and see the toilet. You can see the mess. You see the mess that everybody else is in. And until you come out of that mess, you're still in it. So, principalities of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, which we are in right now. In the evil day, and having, having done all to stand. That means you have to start. That's where knowledge comes in at. 
This is the not see the uh the um what you call this? What is it called? The the armor of Yah is knowledge. That's the whole armor. Knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge is the problem where we at today. Let's get back over here to Revelation 13, as I was sharing in part one. See, a lot of people don't know that a lot of people don't know that um the two governments, the two seats, should I say right now, to two seats is the second, the two seats is a part of the second system. Because don't forget, Caesar is part of the first Roman Empire, which is the first part of the beast in Revelation 13. When it says, um, when it says, and I stood and um Upon the sand, this is 13 verse 1, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, meaning they took over the seven continents, and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. That's every religion in the world today. Oh, I the brother asked me, um, uh, I didn't get a chance to share this with everybody. Someone, um, when I was getting ready to, to, uh, to shut down uh, YouTube Live, um, they asked me, was I Muslim or was I Israel and, and what religion? And that's another thing. I'm not of any religion. I don't keep and have a religion at all. I keep the laws of the Father as well as I know it as I grow in them. Because nobody know it all day one. No different than when you go to school to graduate. You don't know from, from first grade to 12th grade until you get there. So I I know as as I know the, uh, the laws as I know them, but as the spirit lead and guide me, I come to know more. Not only within the laws, within information, within history, within knowledge, according to scripture and according to the law. So, no, I'm not religious. And Muslim, according to the word, I am a Muslim. According to the word, uh, the word Muslim means one who submits himself unto Yah, God, the creator. Yes, I am a Muslim according to that, but I'm not of the religion Muslim. I'm an Israelite by blood, not by trade, but by blood. I'm an Israelite. According to prophecy that was prophesied against the children of Israel and that's coming for the children of Israel. I'm a child of Israel of the tribe of Judah. So that's who I am. And that's what a guy asked who I was when, um, when uh, matter of fact, I got a couple more questions down here real quick. Let me see if I can find them while I'm here. Okay. Uh, or a different religion. Nope, no religion. Can you see the live chat? Okay, I see this. I can't see much. I can't see it like on a live like they usually have. I can see what I'm looking at right now. So I can see that much. For the person who's asking me, I think his name is Noah. It just got a big N-O on there. So this is uh, YouTube Live right there. So other than that, that's my answer to the brother or whoever was that was asking me the question. So um, that's who I am. But my point that I'm getting at is the scriptures at hand, when it talks about who is in charge, how this, this system is the satanic system, and whoever sits in the seat, this is what I wanted to get at. Because I asked, why do people hate Trump? And that, that that's, that's the, the point where I'm at right now, where, where uh, I got the, the, the title from. Why do people hate Trump? Trump is just a person, a man that's sitting in a seat for four years to run this corporation to run this corporation for the people. Now, baby, did you know the car is still running? Okay. For the corporation, for the people. Now, as we can see, we have a lot of insane people. Got to say it like it is. We have a lot of insane people. A lot of people, what I mean, and you already know what I mean by insane. They're looking for a different outcome for the same situation. Same situation happening, but they're looking for a different outcome. So, as I share with you again, I'm a sovereign principle. 
I'm a watchman. I sit back and watch. I'm not a voter. I can't vote. If I vote, it messes my, I, I, I lose my sovereign status. So I cannot vote. And I've been trying to get people to get to the same point because we're supposed to come out of her, my people. Zephaniah chapter two, verse one, two, and three. But if you choose to stay a part of that satanic system, that's your choice. That's your choice. But the credit has gave us a leeway to come out of that system and become children of the most high, to be sovereign from that system. But everybody have, makes their own choice. If you think this world is what you believe and love so much, hey, that's your choice. Your choice. I've been led and guided to understand the things that I've come to know. I would tell you, I don't know it all. But as I come to know certain things, I can stand on it. And until someone proves me differently, prove, prove all things, prove me differently, I'll change. I'll see something different. But the Father and the Spirit is like leading and guiding me. And I can't go outside of what I come to know that's factual and what's true. A lot of people living in La La Land. Like I said, there's so many people around here talking and hey, they act like they know the man. Man, he he man, he took my car from me last week. He did this and he did that. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm glad I'm just a watcher. I'm not a part of that system, that satanic system. And people can't even understand this satanic. You know why? Because they've been living in it so long. Like I said, that about that toilet I was talking about earlier. Till you clean yourself up, you can look back and you can see the mess. And you know you, the S word. You can see it. But too many people love it and live in it. But hey, that's on them. So, but over here, back over here now, as I was starting in 13, 1, I should just go through this real quick, but I'm 22 minutes in already. If I go through this, I'll be about almost two hours to break this down. Come not do it. I don't like miss, miss not on anything. Come on over here, baby, before you go. Give me some sugar. Hold on for a minute, y'all. All right. Baby, about to make a move. So, mm. all right, baby. So, right here, uh, like I was saying, chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his heads, I'm sorry, upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the heads is the seven continents, which Greek has conquered. Right here's going to tell you the reason why he's sitting on the, on the, uh, the seven continents that Greek has conquered. And then I'm going to show you Greek. I showed you the other way before, before but I'm going to show you how, how it's going at this point. Okay. Verse two. See you in a minute, baby. Verse two. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion. You know, he spoke and, I, and like I said, the way I break it down, I break it down, and his feet was like, uh, and was, and the, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, which is the body, and his feet was like unto a bear. To me, the bear, and what has been shared with me, the bear is Russia, the body is Rome, and I'm, I, I like to say England. England, which is the reason why we're talking English now. But, uh, and, uh, and, said, and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion. So the mouth of a lion is the power and speaking great things as he has been doing. Then the key is this. And the dragon, which I'm going to read to you in a few moments, since we're in part two. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon is what we're getting ready to read right now. Revelation 12, verse 3. And then we go back to uh, 13. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. 
and behold, a great red dragon. That great red dragon is Esau. Y'all have heard of Esau and Jacob since we in part two. If y'all didn't, if y'all don't see part one, if y'all heard of the great red dragon, all you got to do is talk is go to. I know this is going to be long. I like to show facts when I say what I'm saying. All right. Genesis 27, but first, let's go to 25. Let's get some understanding. See, that's what I like to do. I like to get understanding as we walk and see. Genesis 25, starting at 21. Let's go here. Genesis 25, starting at 21. And Isaac entreated Yah, the, the Lord, for his wife. Because she was barren means she couldn't have children, right? Yeah. There we go. There we go. For his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. See, this is when Isaac... This is when Isaac, he entreated, or he, he asked, or... or or conceded or asked the father about Rebecca have, having a child because she was barren. She, 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 wouldn't, she couldn't have a baby, right? Verse 22, this is 25 and 22. And the children struggled together within her. So this had to come a time when they started, when she got pregnant and she started to uh, show. And she said, if, if it be so, if this be of the creator, why am I thus? If this is a father, why am I? Why are they fighting inside me? Why am I? Why is this going on? And she, this is the key that a lot of people miss. A lot of people think both. This both of them seen it, and it says, and she went to inquire of the Lord. It wasn't both of them. She went to inquire. I mean, she prayed, she fasted, she did something to inquire of the Creator to get an answer for herself. Verse 23, and the Lord Yah said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Here we go. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. We already see right now, that's Esau. Look at the world today. Look how Esau went around and conquered the seven continents. Look how Esau, no, I'm not just saying Greek. I'm saying Esau, which is Greek and Roman. Because they're both of the, are of the same. They're two different, uh, um, I wouldn't say nationalities. They're two different uh, nations, but they're of the same people. Verse 23. And the Lord said, unto, uh oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. We was at the, uh, the last point. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, which is Esau. And we see that plan this day. No matter how much people, he ain't strong enough, but he is in, 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 in a unity. He is in unity. Matter of fact, not only with his people, he got our people working for him too. He got all nations working for him. If I'm lying, you tell me. How many people are in the army, Navy, Air Force, Marines? The fact that they got armies the way they have them. We don't have armies like that. When we try to come together, it'd be a, shoot, we can barely get 100 together to, to stick together as one under our own rule. But under their rule, they got thousands under their rule. They got missiles, tanks, bombs by war. And that's what I'm going to get in a few minutes. And the elder shall serve the younger. Verse 24. And when her days, when Rebecca's days were to be delivered, were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. 25. And the first came out red. That's your key right there. This is your key to who this is talking about and to the future, to its future, to that child's future. Because the world is, is going to be under the, um, uh, how should I say, the rulership under these two children. The world is going to be under rulership 
under these two children being the heads. Over um, verse 25 again, 25, 25. And the first came out red of Genesis, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Just for you who don't know or didn't know, I'm giving you history according to of the prophecy of where we at today. I'm going to the beginning. That's what I like to do. I like to go to the beginning to show you where we at today. And as you can see, verse 25, and they say, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, verse 26, Genesis 25, 26. And after that came his brother out, and, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared them. He was 60 years old when she bared both the children. Right? Then it goes to say, verse 27, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. He was just a regular man dwelling in tents, doing what he do. But Esau was a cunning hunter. Now, I could go all the way down there and note Esau sells his birthright. And that's in, that's starting at verse 29, but we're not going to go there for lack of time, but you can go and read it for yourself. That's the birthright that he sold. But let's get over here to the blessing. See, the blessing is what these two is under. Now, we're coming into Jacob's blessing, but I came over here for you to see Esau's blessing where we're at right now, but let's go ahead with Jacob. If you go to 27, verse 28 and 29, 27, verse 28 and 29. Now, you can go and read all the information and come up to this point, but I'm giving you the keys. I'm giving the key to do the unlock. The switch is in your mind. I'm giving it to you. I'm, 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 I'm giving you the points to understand. I'm giving you the key. That's why I like to say keys. I like to give you the key to understand the points to unlock things instead of just looking at it, just reading over. A lot of people just read just read over it and don't understand what's being said. Like, oh, okay. This, but they don't even understand what it applies to. I give you the application. That's what I do. That's the understanding I'm trying to get people to understand. So, verse 28 of 20, Genesis 27, verse 28. Therefore, Yah give thee of the dew of heaven. This is Jacob's blessing. I like to say bliss because be less means be less. Blessing means heavenly. Therefore, Yah give thee of the dew of heaven and on the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine, right? The dew of heaven is everything under the heavens and the fatness of the earth worldwide. Worldwide. You'll see that too. 29. Let people serve thee. Let people serve thee. Let People serve thee. You see that? How are we though? No, you ain't got to do it. No, no, it's going. I got, I got. No, let. That's the first word right there, and I just caught that one. Long as I've been reading this, I just hit that. That just hit me. See, every time we go through something, you find a little something to add to your arsenal. Let people serve thee. A lot of times we think we got it. Oh, I got it. I got it. You know, I don't need no help. I don't need nobody. I don't need this. Let. Dang, thank you, Father. This is the first time I caught this one on record. Just to let you know. I see stuff all the time. But when it comes to me by the Spirit, I understand. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Nations of people. And it doesn't mean bow down like this, literally. It means People are going to serve thee. They're going to bow down to you by their helping you. They come and give you gifts. They're going to be doing things because of who we are. We're children of the king, and the king is almighty. But we are the children of the king. Now, what we do, we serve people by this word. People serve us according to gifts and great substance. Thank you, Father. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. I mean, let them do what they're going to do for us. 
Cursed be everyone that curseth thee. Now listen how this is said. Curse everyone that curseth us. He said, uh-uh, no curse. Curse be. Curse be everyone that curses us. That's really why I'm telling like, people with these trolls, they be coming on, right? I said, I ain't got to do nothing. Excuse me, y'all. Put just some mucus coming up. She just made me some mucus tea. Mucus coming up too. But it says, curse be everyone that curses thee. Everyone that do you harm. Like I said, people that don't even know, I'm coming with the Father's word on this right here. This is me coming with the, the Father's word, prophecy, truth, knowledge, information to share with the people. But people, I, I can tell y'all stories about people that didn't try to do stuff to me and, 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 and to me behind my back and to me, period. And things has happened to them. I don't wish no bad on nobody. But see, I've learned a long time ago it's the father's battle. It's not mine. It's not my battle. I ain't got to do nothing to nobody. All I want to do is give you love and give you information, give you truth, and give you knowledge if I can. But when someone come against me, I ain't got to do nothing. I ain't got to do nothing. Because I know, just like when I was learning coming up as a child, if I did something bad and I thought I got away with it, it hit me in my mind. Whatever happened to me, oh no, this happened because you did this. It's going to it's going to definitely hit, hit your mind. And that's the father giving you understanding why you're getting whooped. Some people get whooped for years and my baby can attest for that. She gone. People get whooped for years. The hand when the father put his hand on you, ain't nobody can take his hand off of him. No matter how much you pray. Excuse me. How much you ask. You can you can kind of ask him to let uh, ask him to, to lighten the load, but it's on him because he knows. And, and to be truthful, whatever you are and however you are is what gives you the whooping that you get. If you're an evil person, you're gonna get it good. You may be an evil person, you're getting away with all the stuff you're getting with, maybe having a chance to turn, but you just maybe end up getting reprobated and corrupt, and you can't change. Because your mind, the father won't let your mind change. No different than he told Israel when he told Pharaoh. Said, go down and tell Israel, uh, uh, tell Pharaoh, let my son go. And if he don't, I'll, I'll slay his son, even his firstborn. But before he even went down there, father told him, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. That means that he'll change your mind because you've been, see, everything you do is on you first. Whatever you decide to do, you have, it's on you first. If you get caught, it's just like a trap. You go in somewhere you know you ain't supposed to go. Okay, let me go and try to do something. And you get you get trapped. Let's just say, example, you go into a store, right? You go into a store and you try to do a grab and run or whatever. You try to grab some stuff and run. You don't know it's a lock on the door. They lock the door. That's a trap. You got caught. Now, all they have to do is when they put the lock on, it, either the, 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 the police are triggered or they can push a button and the, and the police is coming. The guy tried to get out the door. Matter of fact, somebody might have tried to steal some jewelry and they couldn't get out. They caught now. It's a trap. But who did it? You. Everybody tried to blame. Everybody, point the finger. Point the finger. But you got three pointing back at you. You got three pointing back at you. Why? Because you are the one who did what you did in order for to get caught up in what you got caught up in. If you choose to run with thugs and people that is not right, that you know ain't right, that's your fault. See, that's the whole point. People are quick to point the finger, but they never look in the mirror. That's the problem we have today. Let me get back over here to the scripture. Now it says, let people serve thee, verse 29, verse Genesis 27, 29. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curses thee is what I was just sharing with you. Now what it said, this said, curse be everyone that curses thee, but watch this. And bliss be he. See, that sounds like an individual, don't it? And bliss be he that blisseth thee. So that right there sounds like the blessings don't go out like that. It goes like the individuals that help you. The ones that come and help you, do things for you, help you out. 
the person that come and help you in different ways, no different than what I'm doing right now. I'm coming helping individuals that's actually taking this information in. You're being blessed. So hope, uh, not hopefully, by the Father's word, I'm going to be blessed. By the Father's word, we just read, I'm going to be blessed. Why? Because I'm blessing whoever that I'm blessing by what I'm giving. According to the spirit, according to the word. As far as I know. And I'm giving you truth compared to what the satanic forces have been giving you all these all this time. So, now, this is coming up. What we just read, we not it. We haven't gotten our blessing yet, but uh, but our blessing is in this. If you understand what I'm saying, our blessing. Some people say be less, but our blessing is within this, even though we're where we are today. We get blessed daily. We haven't come to the point where we are over the whole world with the knowledge of the Father doing His will. Everyone, as it says in Jeremiah 31, verse 31 through 37, the key is 33 and 34. We're not at that point yet. But individually, this is happening. Individually, we're supposed to keep the law. Everybody thought, well, we ain't in the land. We, we still in our uh, oppressor's land. Really? Individually, if you keep the law, individually, you will be blessed. See, a lot of people talk too big to, well, we ain't nothing. And, and see, that's what they promote. They promote that. See, everything starts in the mind first. When you keep the law, the law have to start in the mind first. When you decide you want to go out and rob somebody, it starts in the mind first. If you want to learn something, it starts from the mind first. Whatever you do, it starts in the mind first. So if you want to be free, it starts in the mind first. You want to consider yourself a slave? You're still a slave in the mind first. That's where everything starts, in the mind. Where if you choose to be a slave, that's your fault. I'm not you. All right. Now, let's go to the blessing of why we came here in the first place. Now, we're over here in 27, verse 39. Verse 39, I told y'all, sometimes I get, so I get, I have to explain as I go. That's why I say I know I'll be a long period of time. But now, let's go to Esau and show you how he is the red dragon and he's the beast in this day and time. Let me give it to you. Then we'll go back to 13, uh, 12 and 13. Right here, verse 39. Now, Isaac is blessing Esau. Yeah, I can read the whole story to come to it, but I'm giving you the keys to the information. 39. Genesis 27, verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. You see that? And of the dew of heaven. The same thing. Same thing over here. He, it just switched around. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven. Over here, first, it said the fatness of the earth. And then it says, and the, of the dew of heaven from above. Right? It just switched it around, but gave him the same blessing. And what it is, is you're about to find out how he is who he is in today's time. Verse 40, Genesis 27 and 40. And by thy sword shall thou live. That's your key right there. Number one, that he's the red man. He's the red man. He came out red and hairy all over, right? That recognized and describes who this individual is, right? And then the second one is, how will he live? And by thy sword shall thou live. That's the first verse or first sentence in verse 40. Genesis 27, verse 40. Everywhere you go, by, your, by, by his sword, by, by thy sword, by thy sword shall I live. That means you're going to take, number one is what did the Greeks do? Alexander the Greek. What did he do? This is where it said over here in Daniel. I'll let it go. Over here in Daniel, as I shared with you not too long ago, in verse 2. Nope, here we go. Mm -mm. There we go. Mm, bam. Thank you, Father. Daniel 2. And, and, um, Daniel 2 and what's that? 39. And after thee she arrived, and I'm going to come back to Genesis in a few seconds. And after thee 
shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, which is the Greek, uh, uh, the Medes and the Persian, and I say, and another third kingdom of brass, which is Greek, uh, uh, of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. This is how I come. I came here to share what I'm talking to about talking to you about right now. That's the reason why I'm talking to you. What I'm talking to you about right now. They're going to bear rule over the whole earth. And let me get back over here to finish this up on 40, on 40, Genesis 27, 40. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. So you're going to serve us in many different ways. And it shall, this is prophecy, and it shall come to pass when thou shall have the dominion. Remember I was just telling you about the dominion over the whole earth? The whole earth, seven continents is what Esau is on now, which is the Greeks. Alexander the Greek. And then Rome took his seat. Let me get that to you again in a few seconds. I like to break it down where you can see the understanding from the time of what was prophesied until the time come until it happens. See, we haven't even gotten our seat yet. As in I give it to you. And by thy sword shall thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. That means that we were in charge in a in a way at one time. But and when I say we were in charge, we as a people, we was all over the earth as a people, but yet still. When we were in charge, David was in charge, King Solomon was in charge, but now as time passed and dwindled down and then went to the uh, uh, the Medes and the Persians, they came in, they came into power, but it still was of the father. The father gave all these the, uh, powers to these different nations. The father did it because he gave, he gave the prophecy to let it be known. And by him giving the prophecy to let it be known, he's letting you know what's to come if you study. If you don't study, you're going by what you believe, by what somebody tell you. You got to take what they say, go in and find out what's the truth behind it and what's not. And then, there you go. He should broke the milk off thy neck. So I just gave you that. Let's finish up. And now, over here again, Daniel 2. Now, I'm going to give you this again before we go back to Revelation. So I go back and forth so you can get an understanding of me sharing the information. Daniel 2, 39, one more time. Then we're going to go into 40. And after thee, and which is after Nebuchadnezzar, verse 39, uh, Daniel 2 and 39, and after thee shall rise another kingdom, key word, kingdom, inferior to thee. If, check it out. And the key is, I'm going to 38 real quick so you can understand he was in a kingdom. Me and some brothers was talking yesterday at one the shop. And he was talking about the kingdoms at a certain time. And I was telling them all these kingdoms was a part of Babylon. Remember, when the names was changed, people don't realize, people think stuff just pop up in the air. They don't think in the process of time how things happen. Everything happens in a process of time. See, what I mean by process of time, what I'm talking about is that from the time of Babel, when the tower came together, every, all the languages was the same, which I believe was Hebrew. But, all the languages was the same, right? All the languages were the same. When the angels changed the, na the, uh, the languages of, uh, of the people, every one of the same language was going their own way. Syria had a language. Uh, the uh, Philistines had a language. The, uh, uh, um, uh, I can't remember. All these other people had their own language, right? So the Egyptians had their own language. You know, the Ethiopians had their own language. So all these people spread throughout the earth, going through their own way. And they started, uh, not migrating, but they started to build their own kingdom in their place. So the Tower of Babylon, this is where Babylon began, began to be a, uh, you could say a, you can't even say a nation. Can't say it's a nation because we have many different people. So this is where the world became Babylon. The whole world had different languages, different sects, and different sects and sect in different parts of the earth. My, my language and all that, but I know what I'm talking about. So this is where Egypt grew to be a great nation. 
This is where Syria grew to be a great nation. This is where the Chaldees grew to be a great nation. This is where the Philistines grew to be a great nation. All these different people grew to be great nations wherever they were. And then, this is the reason why I said this. So now you can understand verse, the interpretation of the dream. Verse 36. I was going to go 38, but I'm starting at 36. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Verse 37. Thou, O king, are a king. You see what it says there? Thou, O king, are a king of kings. See, this is a king in a certain place, in a certain time, in Babylon. In Babylon, he's a king in Babylon. Right? For the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom. See, that's what I'm saying. People don't understand words. They look and they just read on through, but they don't sit down and map out and understand what the word is actually saying. Has given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. See, given Nebuchadnezzar a kingdom, I don't know how big it was, but he's given them power and strength over a kingdom in the earth. <clears throat> Verse 38. And, whether, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven, of the heaven, have he given into thine hand in that kingdom, which is a kingdom, and hath made thee ruler over them all in that kingdom. Thou art this head of gold. Now listen to 39. He's the head of gold in that kingdom. Now he said 39. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. After him, going to write, we know this is the Medes and the Persian. And uh, that's the brass. And another third kingdom. Now, this is your key compared to a kingdom and over the whole earth. And another third kingdom of brass, which the other one was silver. I'm sorry. Medes and Persian is silver. This is brass, which is the Greeks. Another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Now, this is where they went around and took over all the earth. This is not in Babylon. Now, this is where Greek has taken over the whole earth. This is the difference that a lot of people don't really understand. Verse 40. And the fourth kingdom, which is, which is Rome, shall be strong as iron. In, uh, in, I'll say, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all things, shall it break in pieces and bruise. I know what I'm going to talk about now. What I thought about yesterday, what I was going to talk about, but it didn't come to my mind, but now I thought about it. I was going to talk about the, uh, the, iron, the iron and the clay, the feet. That's what I was going to get into. That's what I looked. That's what my thought was yesterday to get into today, but it slipped my mind on where I'm at now. So by reading this, I remember what I was going to get into to still break it down to understand that this is where we at today, the iron and the clay. But I'm not going to go into that now. I just thought about where I was going to go. Now you understand. Now I understand and remember what I was going to speak on, but I'm where I'm at now. So, but now we in. Why do everybody hate Trump? I'm trying to get everybody to understand it. It's just two seats. That's here for four years for whoever gets in it. And, it, and in those seats, it's supposed to be for the outcome of the people for the next four years for that corporation that they are a part of. That's all I'm sharing. was trying to share, but I'm going into prophecy to let you understand how we get to this point of those seats. Now, I shared that. I'm not going to go no further into that because I'll be all day. So, as we see, Verse 12, I mean, Revelation 12, verse 3. This is your key. And there appear another wonder in heaven. Again, I'm going to read. And behold, a great red dragon. Now you know who the red dragon is, which is Esau, who has, through a process of time, became great over the whole earth by the Greek empire. And then, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head, as I shared in part one and right now. Uh, now we're going to go into the first beast, which is the, the first beast of the Roman system. You got the system, you got the Roman system is a beast within itself. 
but you got systems inside. Now you got the, the first beast, which is when uh when the Romans came into power and they had Caesars. They had Caesars at the time. You don't hear the word Caesar anymore, do you? Now you hear Pope, which is the second beast, which is still of the Roman Empire, which is still of the fourth beast. So I'm going to read this down into this so you can get that understanding. Might as well keep it going. And I stood upon the sands of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven he heads, which is continents, and ten horns, which are powers, and upon his horns ten crowns, which are kings, which are kings or kingdoms. And upon his heads... The names of blasphemy. These are people blaspheming the creator's word throughout the whole earth. Because Israel, only you have I known. All the other people didn't know the almighty, the creator, the law, and the word of Yah. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Like I say, that's Rome. That's more hit me as Rome now. But I'm still saying it was England. And the feet was like a bear, which is Russia. But yet and still, in general, it was Rome, uh, it was Rome that, that took the seat, which we got about to read right now. And his mouth spake as a lion, and his mouth as and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, meaning that where he roared, you know how you know how roar, lions he roars. And that's what we did. Well, not we, but uh um Rome did. And it says, and the dragon, and this is what I meant by the dragon, which is the Greek. And the dragon gave him his power. Greek gave Rome his power and his seat and his seat and great authority. This is where Rome came in and sat in the seat of, of Greek and they took over and they started doing great authority and started doing what they were doing. Now, let me go into verse three. And I saw one of his heads and it was wounded. This is where you come into where, that's why I said this is the time of Caesar. This is the time of Rome. This is in a time of when they start, this is where the blasphemy come in as well. This is where they start making the uh, Christianity. This is when they start putting the books together. A lot of people don't know this. This is some history I already researched a long time ago and I can tell you about right now. They put the books together which is the four Gospels and mainly the whole New Testament, but mainly the four Gospels that the Council of Nicaea came up with. But you had one guy named Arian that was going against because he's saying that the prophet Yahshua was just a prophet. He came to do a work and he was just a prophet. But the, 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 the bishops in the council, they wanted to say, no, he was the son of God. He was a God. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He's this and he's that. And he's this and that. They, when they came with all this story that they gave you, excuse me, in the New Testament, manipulated the information from the laws and the prophets in the New Testament, I mean, in the, in the law and the prophets, and they added stuff and they put stuff. Now, I'm not saying there's no uh, truth in the New Testament, as I just read to you out of Ephesians. I'm not saying there's no truth in there. What I'm saying is the New Testament is when the father said that um, he gave you blessing and curses, the blessings is the law, the curses is anything other than the law, mainly which is the New Testament. Mainly, if you uh, don't keep my law, i seen land and ye know not. There you're going to serve other gods, wood and stone, gods your fathers haven't known. What gods are these? Jesus is the main one of the day. You got Buddha. You got, these are blasphemy. Even now, y'all done changed the word. Y'all took Jesus down and put the word Yahshua in, but you don't know if that's Yahshua's story because they manipulated it. They manipulated Yahshua's story. So the world think that this is, and this was, it's all in here. 13 gives you all this. Part one and part two, which is uh, one through, uh, uh, verse one through 10, and then 11 through 18. It's all a part the Roman Empire that people are living in today and don't even realize it. But let me finish up. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And this was when they, they had been fighting in, 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 the, um, in the council trying to put together the New Testament. Then it said, 
and say, and his deadly wound was healed. That's when they got the New Testament together. That's when Christianity came about to be Christianity of that the, that the world has been living from that time until today. Since 325 AD until today. People still under that God spell. Gospel? That's a God spell that was put upon the world. But let's keep it moving. And all the world, here you go, and all the world wondered after the beast. That system. Catholicism. Christianity. And if not that, you got church and state because all the world is under one or the other. And if you if you don't believe me, that's the reason why we got the 501c3 under that, that Roman rule, that so-called government. The 501c3 is of the church, and I believe state, but the whole point is the UCCs and all this stuff is under the Roman Empire. All of it. Until you come out and become sovereign, not a part of that system, you are a part of that system. Verse 4. And they worship the dragon. Oh, yeah. The, the Greeks. Don't we have Greek sororities now? Don't we have uh, uh, Greek fraternities? Don't we have Greek all this stuff uh, uh, under the Greek Empire stuff? They still got they still got the stuff in the Roman Empire. They still got the Greek stuff they're doing as well. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. You see that again? The dragon, Revelations twelve and three, gave power unto this beast right here, which is Rome which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast saying, worship the beast. It don't always mean you're bowing. You're giving your, your, you're giving your, uh, 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 your authority. You're giving your life over to it. You're giving yourself over to whatever the beast say and do. That's the reason why people out here screaming crazy about Trump. Why do anybody hate Trump? They, they screaming crazy about the seat that he's be, he's getting put into. We don't want him. To, but they don't even know. He said more stuff than Kamala. But I'm just a watchman. I'm sitting back watching. I'm a watchman. But I am sharing information, but I'm a watchman. And, the, and they worship the beast saying, let me read that four again, verse 13, one, uh, four, uh, 13 and four, Revelation 13 and four. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And let me say something about that dragon again. I was just talking to you about sorority, I mean, sororities and fraternities and and. Maybe masonry, I believe that may have came up at that time. I don't know. But what I will say is that I know people that didn't brand themselves. You know, brand, what do you do to animals? They branded themselves with their they, with their fraternity and sorority uh, uh, logo. Not sorority, I don't think the women do it. But they branded themselves with that. Branded. That's worshiping. I just had to go back there because that just hit my mind. Branding themselves with this stuff. Branding stuff with tattoo. Tattoo's another form of branding. All over their bodies. Boy, these people. Just, just, thank you, Father. It's coming out the way it's coming. And then, okay, I got a beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, the mucus coming up. Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Who ever make war with Rome? Rome is powerful. That's why I say in the L, and one should be stronger than the other. Who is able to make war? It's all in the scriptures. It just said it. Thank you, Father, for putting that there so I can let that be known. And one should be stronger than the other. Right? Then it says, verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. Christianity. When you speak blasphemy, you're going against, you, you're blaspheming the word of Almighty. When the Father said one thing, you're going against it. That's the Antichrist. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Now, that day I haven't come to knowledge of. I keep saying I'm going to go back into my information, but I'll be so busy, I forget to just go back into it and, and, and look at 
the information that I shared, me and my wife was sharing, I had her read. I forgot that was last week. I forgot which one it was, what which one we was in when we was looking at it. But I had her read. I don't know. That might have been in uh uh second look. I think that's in second look at Jesus is the image of the beast. Second look at it, Jesus is the image of the beast. I did one in well, I did one called uh, Jesus is the image of the beast. And then I did second look at Jesus is the image of the beast. I think that's the one that is in. I had my, my wife read, and she, when she first read, she read in, I think it was uh, uh, 380 something AD. And then we end up going back to 325 AD. So I'm looking at that could be the 40 and two months. That could be, but I don't know. So I'm just thinking. I just went back to something that we what we did. Did I get a chance to check that out? Second look at Jesus is the image of the beast. And you'll find that in my platforms. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Yah. Jesus. One way is this. You have heard of old time that uh what was one of me saying? He said, um, an eye for an eye, or two for a two. But I say unto who is you to change the Father's word? But I say unto you, unless you do this or you do that. That's blaspheming the Father's word. Jesus came and blasphemed. Until I, I, I like I said, I used to throw this one from one day to the other, and I started reading, and then I started, and I started really getting into the law, and then understanding you can't change the Father's word. I don't care who you say or they say you are. The Father's seen everything we're looking at right now. But yet and still, someone's going to come and say they're going to they gonna claim him to be the Son of God when we all, as he said in uh, 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 Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, we're Israel is my son, even my firstborn, thus says Yah, thus said the Lord, thus said the Creator, Israel is my firstborn, is my son, even my firstborn. You can't change that. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Yah and blasphemed his name. They call him Jesus now. And his tabernacle, which is his people. And them that dwell in heaven, which is us. See, this weird is this is a tabernacle. The law is where it dwells. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And over uh, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongue and nations. Isn't that what they is that what Greek and Rome did? I'm breaking all this down to come to to show y'all where we're gonna get to the two horns in verse 11 to show you where we at today compared to where we came from. That's why I had to go all the way back to Genesis, and I'm coming up to where we are right now. Tongues and nation, verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth. You see that? All that dwell upon the earth. And this is under the, the first beast. Remember. Remember, I don't know if y'all know or not, um, after the Council of Nicaea and King Constantine, Constantine became Christian, then the Crusaders went around the earth making people accept Christianity. This deceit and authority, now Greek has given to Rome. The, the Romans, the Crusades or the Crusaders or the Crusades went around and made people accept Christianity. And if you didn't, they killed you off. They killed you off. They made, this is where this is the reason why Christianity is so prevalent in the world today. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. See that? And what's him? See, a lot of people thinking it's Jesus. It's the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is what people is worshiping right now by the things that they do. Like I said, it's not about bowing. It's about, it is about bound, but not physically. It's about bound your mind to the system. And if you ain't turning to the Father's word, you bowed your mind to the world. It's only one or the other. Just like Jacob and Esau. It's only one 
or the other. That's why I said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. That just came to my mind. Why? Because you don't know where you at. The law is specific. The creator is specific. And all that dwell upon the earth that shall worship him, whose name, this is a key, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. A lot of people don't understand the lamb, the lamb is Judah and Israel. It's really Judah mostly because he's the lion. And that, 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 that actually is giving the word to all those who's going to keep and do the law or do the word of the father, which is the spirit, according like I'm doing right now. But the lamb is the seven spirits upon us, Judah and Israel. The seven, and if you don't believe me, I don't want to go into that because I'll be a lot longer breaking it down. But all you got to do is go into Revelation 5, verse 5 and 6. 6 will tell you right there. It's this, uh, uh, the lamb is, I'm just going to read it. I'm not going to go into it. I told you I'll be here all day because I have to break it down. But I will just read that point for you. I'm just going to go into 6 because 5, five is, um, is the lion. The lion, if you go into Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, it tells you that Judah carried the scepter. And you know what a scepter is for the king. He anoints or he crowns his subjects. So no different than Judah is waking the world up to the knowledge and the information. And what they're doing is taking the knowledge and information and running. That's why it says, oh, I ain't going to go there. I'm just going to give you this so I can go back there because this is about Trump. Why do people hate Trump? So I, y'all go to my other stuff, check it out, but I'm trying to stay on, on point. But I'm giving you, I'm breaking all the way down to get you to where we are. Verse 6 says, and I be and I beheld, verse, Revelation 5, verse 6, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. See that? Remember we just got to read that? As it had been slain, having seven horns, power, seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The seven spirits is within Israel and Judah, is in Judah, shall I say, in Israel, sent forth to all the earth. Within us, not just out here, just out here willy nilly it's in the people. The seven spirits is in the people, awakening them in this day and time. Now, let's get back over here to where we were. From the foundations of the world. So now you know the Lamb is the seven spirits sent of Yah within Israel, in Judah and Israel, actually. Verse 10, uh uh, verse uh, 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity, see, this is where we at today in this point. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints, which is us, Israel. This is our patience, and this is the faith that we have. Now comes the second beast. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon, as I just shared with you in part one. You have Democrat and you have Republican. And whichever one comes into power is the head that the world hears. Every, the whole world is looking at Trump right now. The whole world was looking at Obama at a time, wasn't it? And they see him for what he is, don't they? The whole world was looking at Hillary Clinton when she stood up. The whole world was looking at, as we just saw, Kamala Harris. You know what I'm saying? The whole world looks at whoever's going to get in that position. The world is looking at it. Whether you believe it or not, it's right here in Scripture. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, which is the second system. Now we have Pope. We ain't got Caesars no more. We have Popes, which is actually over the system of the two lambs. 
He's actually over that because this is where he's the head over all that, which as you'll find that part in the last of this, which is uh, verse 18, with knowledge and understanding. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. I told you two horns in, but the, he spake, like I say, when they stand up, everybody listening. Because they're speaking and understanding, and everybody's looking at what's going on according to what? The dollar. This is where you get church and you get state. The dollar, the value, all this stuff is a part of the Roman Empire. Verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast. See, the first beast is still the first uh, uh, part of Rome. He's exercising all that, but they put in policies now. Certain policies for the, the situation that's going on with everybody. And they got certain policies. This is where you'll find Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8 is what is this is talking about. You guys have understanding. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, Christianity. Like I said, if you want to know more, go check out second look at Jesus is the image of the beast. And also, did Christ walk with the, uh-uh, did, did Luke walk with the one called Christ? Check those two videos out. You can look at the long video, or you look at the two parts in, 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 uh, in, um, in YouTube. Part one, part two, or you look at the full version and check it out as you go. Check out both of those. You'll be you'll find out some information. And when you check that out, write down your information, and then you go research. Maybe you'll find out a little bit more than what I shared. Or me and my wife shared. Just go do your own research. Whose deadly wound was healed. Uh-uh. He all it, verse 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And that's when Christianity came into power. That was the deadly wound. 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight. We know what happened in Hiroshima. In the sight of men. We know what happened in Hiroshima so we know that's what the fire that come down. Not only in that end we look at war. All the war that's going on, the tanks the fire, uh, uh, the uh, plane, bombs, missiles. Excuse me. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. I mean, in the sight of the system. Oh, all the, see, all the people come together, makes up the beast, makes up the system. As you come together, this is how the system comes to be the way it is. Saying unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. This is where the image comes. That they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a swore and did live. See, the beast itself was Christianity. The image is your Jesus. Jesus is the image to the beast. The beast is the Roman Empire. That's the reason why you got the uh, the head of the Roman Empire, which should I say, the head of the of the um, the image is the Roman Empire, which is Christianity, and the Christianity, the image to Christianity is Jesus. You can't get Christian. I mean, with the one you can't get Jesus without Christianity. Excuse me. Can't get. See, you have to have an image. Now they're taking the name from. They take the name out and the face, the Caucasian face and painted melanated, painted melanated and took the name and changed it to Yahshua. It's still an image. And that's what people don't get. I don't care if you out here saying, well, Yahshua, Yahshua, Yahshua is still an image. All you did is change it and, and, and replace it. The father said he is our Yah and our Yah only. Period. He never gave an image for no one to worship. If that's the case, Moses would be there. Moses is the one who brought the law. If that's the real case, if he wanted you to have an image, but Moses is not even an image. 
So he gonna give you some. Oh, no, I'm gonna give it off that. Fifteen. And he had power to give life unto the image. See, and that life to that image is Christianity. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast of the system, and to that that image should, of the beast should both speak, speak. Jesus said, Jesus said this. Jesus said that. And they called Jesus their God. There you go. I ain't going to go too far after that. That he should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That's when the crusaders were going around and doing what they were doing. They were promoting Christianity and they were promoting Jesus. And that's why the world is the way it is today. Should be killed. And he caused it, and matter of fact, not only that, that was part of the persecution. The persecution. Y'all remember they were doing the per persecuting people? The, mainly our folks, the ones that was the ones that was believing in the law, but yet still they was also believing in uh Yahshua. That was where that where the persecution was at, too. As well as the uh cru crusades going around making people accept their way of life. Now I like to go to 6, 17, then 16, but I'm going to read it the way it is. Because 17, actually, the second part of 17 actually happens first, which is, no, nah, I'm going to say 16, take it on down. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. That's it. That was in these latter days. As far as I know, if anything happened before that, I know this as in these latter days. 17. And no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You can't buy or sell without the birth certificate or the social security card. You can't buy or sell nothing actually when it comes to when it comes to the system, that is. Now, 18, last verse, and just to break this down, here is wisdom. Wisdom. Let him that has understanding, let him that has the knowledge, count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, which is the Pope. And his number is 603 score and six. And if you break that number, if you if you look up what the actual Pope's title is, is Victus Philly D or Victorious Philly D. I, I looked it up at one time. I had it at one time when I was going to the house of Israel when the bro my brother Rabbi R. Divine shared that information. He shared it, um, wrote it down and everything. Now, like I said, that was years ago, but I still have it here. A lot of y'all probably know of it too. But Victorious or Victus Billy D in Roman numerals add up to 666, which is the Pope, which is over church and state. And everybody ha has a birth certificate, and so, well, actually has a social security number and birth certificate, but and social security number. Um, is a part of the employees of this worldwide corporation. Now, I said all that mainly to let y'all understand in verse 11 when they talk about the two horns, the two horns being Democrat and Republican and spoke as a dragon. And we already know they speak, majority of the people listen, even though everybody else is still doing their own thing. So, was something I was going to go to at this point to still speak on this point because the whole thing is why does everybody hate Trump? That's the whole thing. He's a person sitting in a seat for four years to come, and was but people are trying to kill him, people hate him because you know what things are about to happen. Now I don't know what's going to happen outside of. I know that I see in my point of view. This is me. I'm not saying the spirit told me. This is just me speaking. To me, when they tried to assassinate him, as I shared earlier, the father angels was around him. He's getting ready to change some things for people for the better. Now, I know I'm always giving props to Brother Rabbi Artivine. I have to give props to Brother Elisha, who actually got me and many others to see the law and the prophets. <laughs> Things happen for a purpose. 
to see the law and the prophets for what they were and then start to open my eyes to the New Testament, to see the real point of the New Testament to that point of view. Brother Elisha, he's long gone now. Rest in peace, Brother Elisha. And he got me and a few other men, not me, just a few, a lot of other people to really see the real truth. And then in my growth, I started to see the truth in both. And why I say the, the truth in both of these, the new and the old, is because when the father said, I'm seeing you in the land that ye know not, and you're going to serve other gods, the father said it. Whatever comes from the mouth of the father, the creator, the almighty, the almighty, Yah, the universal consciousness, whatever he has revealed to us is true. So the fact that the New Testament talks about the curses is still true. That's why the world is under the curse now. The world is cursed because they didn't follow the law. The father gave the blessings, which is the law. You either have the blessings and you're a part of it, or you have the curses and you're a part of it. Whichever one is still you're a part of it. And as I shared in the beginning of all this, whatever road you decide to walk down is on you. You can't blame nobody else for the road and the steps you've taken. You can't, it's, you, you, we all can be manipulated, but we, when, we, when someone show you information to come out of the manipulation and you choose to stay in the manipulation, that's your choice. And that's where we're at right now. Other than that, we all have a choice. We all have, a, we all th have things that we're to do and be a part of well, if it's right, wrong, good, or evil. Other than that, just wanted to share with you that I am that Mikael in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's me. Showing the holy people who we're really supposed to be. Waking them out of their dead beds, which is really in their heads. For all of you who's living in the new, this is for you. I'm the same Mikael in Revelations 12, battling that red dragon where Satan dwells, who deceiveth the whole world but prevaileth not, because the horn is blown without a doubt. This was prophesied for you to see that that Mikael is really me. I want to thank Brother Alex uh, Henderson for coming in. I don't, I didn't get a chance to ask him was he uh, Dr. Henderson's um, kinfolk or not. Uh, he just pulled out, uh, but other than that, I like to thank everybody for coming on this beautiful Shabbat. Today again is November twenty third, two thousand twenty four, and uh, we're gonna smile our way out before we give any more information. And I'm gonna let y'all know how to get back. Well, actually, all my information is inside, so you can go from there. Smile, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai. Ekad Baru Shekebo Vakuto Yolam Vahir Hallelujah. Hero Israel, Yah Father is one Father. Bliss be thy glorious kingdom forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise your Almighty and thank you. For anybody that like to get in contact me with me or uh like to get with me on any of my um my um media sites or what have you, uh we're right here. My information is in the post. I'm getting ready. It don't make no sense for me to share all the information when the information is in the post. All you gotta do is hit the description, it'll open up. You can go down there, you can find my number, my emails. My uh, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Rumble, Patreon, and Twitter, which is my ex. <laughs> so I'm not, I, I, it don't make no sense for me saying all that all this time now because it's just a waste of time. It's not a waste of time because the, you need to know, but it's there if you want it. But other than that, I thank you for your time, your patience. You're listening there. You're seeing that. Uh, I love you. I appreciate you. Have a beautiful Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 
Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Love you. Peace. So right now I'm going to say bye first to Zoom. You have a good one. Thank you for coming. Peace.